Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we have got a new story to get through concerning Intel's first graphics card that is going to be coming to the mainstream in the year 2020. They had their architecture day and we have finally got some of the early details on it. We don't have any specs or anything like that just yet. But we do at least know that they're going to be coming in 2020 and we've got a little bit of information like the naming scheme of the new cards and also I have a mystery unboxing for you after we get through that news topic. A box actually from NVIDIA. This just arrived a few minutes ago. I was waiting for it to come so that I could do this video and unbox it on camera because I legitimately like seriously I have no idea what is in this box. It could be a Titan. It could be an RTX 2060. I have no clue. I didn't receive any emails about this except for last night. I got a FedEx shipping notification for a package coming from NVIDIA. It was overnighted, like express overnight, guaranteed by 1030 a.m. So what is it? whatever is in here, I hope it's something important and exciting. But uh, we'll get to that in just a few moments. But first, I want to talk about the Intel discrete graphics cards, which, as we have talked about with rumors before, is coming in the year 2020. Intel's really been ramping up their team to be able to roll out these cards to consumers, bringing on people like Raja Kadori, formerly from AMD, as well as Chris Hook, who is also in charge of Radeon's PR over at AMD and the Radeon Technologies Group. So those two guys have come over to Intel to help them with their graphics cards. And it's going to be nice to have some competition in the marketplace, honestly. I mean, right now, especially with what's going on with NVIDIA and AMD, and AMD not really have any, having any real heavy hitter cards at the high end, they're doing very well on the mid-range, and it looks like Navi will possibly be targeted towards the mid-range as well. So it's going to be nice to have just one more contender in the ring which could help bring down prices acro across the board and whenever there's competition that's only going to be good for the consumer if you want any more proof they just opened up a new grocery store near me little or, or Lidl or I don't know it's like it's like an Aldi competitor but there's like an Aldi like a few like a mile away and there's a shop right there and a couple other grocery stores and like all these grocery stores have like their prices have just been dropping steadily like going one right after the next and that's because of competition because this new contender came into the area that has really good prices and stuff and now we're seeing the other larger chains that have been around here longer and more well established their prices are coming down so they are being forced to compete with each other if you don't if you can couldn't see any of the, any other better example than that which could be applied to graphics and CPUs then I really don't know what it would be but before they get into discrete graphics in the year 2020, they're also going to have an integrated graphics, which is actually going to be their most powerful yet. It's going to break the teraflop barrier, so they're promising at least one teraflop of performance on the Intel Gen 11 graphics, which you can get a kind of a, a look at the layout here of what's going to be going on with that. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see, especially when you consider um, competitors that have Vega integrated graphics, obviously things in like in NUX from Intel and also AMD based CPUs with integrated Vega graphics. So seeing what these can do compared to those will certainly be quite interesting. And we are expecting to see those actually earlier rather than the discrete graphics card. These will actually be coming in the year 2019. So we don't have that much longer to wait for them, depending on when they come out in 2019, but obviously by the end of the year. So within the next 12 months, we should see some, at least some, some kind of glimpse at their architecture in action, even if it is only going to be on integrated and mobile GPUs. Now, obviously the one that everyone's excited about is the one coming in 2020, discrete graphics cards that'll be for gamers as well as the enterprise level. And this is called the Intel XE. And we've got a look at some, we got one of the slides here that actually show the, you know, the architecture coming in the year 2020 and being a fair bit faster than the Gen 11, which I just mentioned coming in 2019. And we could really see what Intel is targeting here with their XE GPUs. So it's going after pretty much the full range of people that would be interested in graphics. We're talking about integrated and entry-level mid-range enthusiasts and then data center and AI. And interestingly enough, Data center and artificial intelligence takes up the largest part of this um, infograph here, and that makes a lot of sense, being that their main competition right there right now is NVIDIA, so they definitely want to go ahead and make up some ground at the data center, and I feel like that's probably going to be um, the main area that they're really focusing on with these discrete graphics first. They want to go after the AI and the data centers, enterprise level type of stuff, 
But then that same architecture, we will get to see trickle down into the mainstream and enthusiast market as well, which is really what you and I are going to be interested in most at the end of the day, seeing the performance in things like gaming and just having another graphics card in the mix from another company that's not AMD, not NVIDIA, which can, as I said at the start there, can help a lot drive down prices and also push forward technology even further because when you get you know, these companies pushing each other, that just means they're going to try to get out the best, fastest product that they can first and also to undercut the competition, which is just going to be awesome. So that's one of the main reasons that I'm excited to see Intel enter into the space. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm really expecting them to come out right away and instantly dethrone NVIDIA. I mean, that's probably going to take a few generations for them to even get to that level, I would imagine, unless they have something really impressive up their sleeves that is just going to completely blow everyone away and just change the game completely. It's certainly could, it could be done. Um, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on, you know, how big of an impact you think the Intel graphics are going to have right away and also over time and things like that. But with the Intel news out of the way for their discrete graphics, let's go over to their competition in the year 2020, NVIDIA. Because as I mentioned at the start of the video, I've got this mix, this mystery package. I'm going to go ahead and back up my mic here. Sorry if this makes noise. I'm going to unbox this package here for you guys. This is my first time opening. It's completely sealed. I have not opened it yet myself. Um, I crossed out all the address information and stuff like that. So don't try like slow framing this into... Look at that knife. Look at that. I'm a joker knife. You want to know how I got these scars? By opening boxes with oversized switchblades. That's how. I don't know if this should be considered a switchblade, but it, it switches and then it blades. Probably going to cut myself here. I don't think this is a Titan RTX. The, the, the box is not the right size. We've got some foam, some pink foam padding in here. That's the first thing I'm seeing opening this box, so I don't actually know what's underneath here. Let's go ahead and do the reveal. Are they serious? That's all that's in there. It's a, uh, it's an NVIDIA Christmas ornament. And it says RTX on top, NVIDIA GeForce RTX, which makes sense why there's a reflection in the middle of it because I guess this has ray tracing on. I'll look at the backside. The backside has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX logo. I'll, I'll show you some B-roll of this here so you can get a better look at it. So it's not a Titan RTX and it's not an RTX 2060, which were like the two things I was kind of hoping it was the most, but it's a ray tracing enabled ornament. Sorry if you were excited for more than this. Personally, I was as well, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. This is a, this is a very nice gesture. This is the first time that they've ever included me in something like that. So I'm pretty happy to have this ray tracing enabled ornament. I'll definitely be putting this on my Christmas tree, despite with my, if my girlfriend protests or not. And it's, uh, it is very reflective. I can really see myself in there. Whoa. Um, so yeah, thank you to NVIDIA for the Christmas ornament. But just so you know, I still would like a 2060 and possibly a Titan, you know, just to test Obviously, I don't really need to tighten that much. I've got 2080 Ti, which is probably going to be fine. Um, and probably not that big of a performance difference. But hey, I appreciate the gift, NVIDIA. Thank you so much. So that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here and uh, get on with the rest of my day. I hope you guys uh, have a good one. And I will see you all tomorrow for another video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below. And subscribe if you're not already. And uh, ring the notification bell or the little Christmas ornament shaped belt at the bottom that does not have ray tracing turned on, but this does. Chili? Maybe. Alright. I love my ornament. It's so much better than a Titan RTX. <laughs> Terra.